most great revolutions in science are preceded by revolutions in measurement. And we have had a revolution in measurement the past few years that have allowed businesses to understand in much more detail what their customers are doing, what their processes are doing, what their employees are doing. And that tremendous improvement in measurement is creating new opportunities to manage things differently. This revolution in measurement, starting with the switch from analog to digital data, I think is as profound as the development of the microscope in what it did for biology and medicine. We've done research to look at some of the changes in the attitudes people have to how they make decisions. And we've found a shift from using intuition towards more using data and analytics in making decisions. And this change has been accompanied with a measurable improvement in productivity and other performance measures. Specifically, a one standard deviation increase towards data and analytics was correlated with about a five to six percent improvement in productivity and a slightly larger increase in profitability in those same firms. The implication for uh, companies competing in the marketplace is that by changing the way they make decisions, they're likely to be able to outperform some of their competitors. The prerequisite, of course, is just the technological infrastructure, the ability to measure things in more detail than you could before. The harder thing is to get the set of skills, and that includes not just some analytical skills, but also uh, a set of attitudes and understanding of the, uh, of the business. And then the, the third thing, which is, is the subtlest, but perhaps the most important, is this cultural change, this attitude um, about how to use data. I think there are a lot of companies that think they're using data, and you often see bar charts and pie charts and numbers in, in management presentations. But historically, that kind of data has been used more to confirm and support decisions that really had already been made uh, by management, rather than to learn new things and to discover what the right answer is. So the cultural change is for managers to be willing to say, you know, that's an interesting problem, that's an interesting question, let's set up an anal analysis to understand it, or let's set up an experiment to discover the answer. Too many managers are not opening their eyes to this opportunity and understanding that what big data can do in terms of changing the way they compete. They have to be ready to, in some ways, show some vulnerability and say, look, we're open to the data and not go in there saying, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to manage from the gut. I have years of experience and, and I know the answers to this going in. And I think historically a lot of managers have been implicitly or explicitly rewarded for that kind of confidence. Um, but you have to have a, a different kind of confidence to be willing to let the data speak. I know one CEO, when he came in and pushed this attitude, told me he had to change over 50% of his senior management team. Uh, because they just didn't get it or wouldn't get it and it was just not working. Um, obviously that was a painful thing to have to do over a period of a couple of years, but the results have been very successful for them and it requires that level of aggressiveness by top management if they really want to end up in that group of leaders as opposed to the laggards. Now, having enough data to get a statistically significant result is not a problem. There's plenty of data. So the skills often have more to do with sampling methodologies, designing experiments, and going about um, working with these very, very large data sets without becoming overwhelmed. If you look inside of companies, you also see a transformation in terms of the functions that are using data. CIOs are also discovering that more and more it's the marketing people the people working with customers, customer relationship management, that have the biggest data needs and that are, they're working with most closely. Um, this is part of a broader revolution as we move from just financial numerical data towards all sorts of non-financial metrics. Often the non-financial metrics give a quicker and more accurate measure of what's happening in the business. To give you one example, um, I was uh, talking to Gary Loveman. He's the CEO of uh, Caesars Entertainment, formerly Harrah's. Um, and, a, and a, a PhD graduate of MIT. Um, he's used some of his techniques to really revolutionize what's happening 
in that industry. And uh, of course, what he cares about is bottom line results. But interestingly, what he measures increasingly is customer satisfaction and a lot of other intermediate metrics. I asked him why he was measuring, say, customer satisfaction as opposed to profitability. And he said that, that, that customer satisfaction metrics were much quicker and more accurate and more precise metrics of what was happening in response to some of the changes and policies that he put in place. I mean, think of it this way. If, if a customer uh, ends up uh, satisfied or dissatisfied, that will affect their probability of coming back next year. Now, next year's financial results will be affected uh, as a result, and you could, in principle, try to match up the experience the customer had this year with future year's um, uh, return rates, but a much quicker way of getting some feedback on which processes are working is to look at their customer satisfaction contemporaneous with the process changes you put in place. Um, it's not just big data in the sense that we have lots of data, but I think you can also think of it as nano data in the sense that we have very, very fine-grained data, ability to measure things much more precisely than in the past. You can learn about the preferences of an individual customer and personalize your offerings for that particular customer. One of the biggest revolutions has been taking uh, enterprise information systems like ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning, or CRM, Customer Relationship Management, SCM, uh, Supply Chain Management, those large enterprise systems that companies have spent hundreds of millions of dollars on and using the data from them not just to manage the operations, but to gain business intelligence and learn what, how they could be managed differently. A common pattern that we're seeing is that three to five years after installing one of these big enterprise systems, companies start saying, hey, we need some business intelligence tools to take advantage of all this data. And it's up to managers now to seize that opportunity and take advantage of this very fine-grained data that just didn't exist previously. There's some good news and there's some not so good news. The good news is that technology is not slowing down and the pie is getting bigger, uh, productivity is uh, accelerating, and that should make us all better off. Um, however, it's not making us all better off. Over the past 20 years or so, median wages in the United States have stagnated because a lot of people don't have the skills to take full advantage of this technology. And unfortunately, I don't see the, that uh, changing anytime soon unless we have a, a much bigger effort to change the kinds of skills that are available in the workforce and, and have a set of technologies that people can tap into more readily. This flood of data and analytical opportunities creates more value for people who can be creative in seeing patterns and people who can be entrepreneurial in creating new business opportunities that take advantage of these patterns. So my hope is that the technology will create a platform that people can tap into to create new entrepreneurial ventures. Some of them perhaps you know, huge hits like uh, Facebook or Zynga or Google, but also perhaps equally important for the economy, um, uh, hundreds of thousands or millions of small entrepreneurial ventures uh, eBay-based or, or app-based um, that um, mi millions of ordinary people can be creative in using technology and also use their entrepreneurial energies to create value that way. That would be an economy where everybody benefits, where, where uh, not just not only does the pie get bigger, but also each part of the pie, uh, each of the individuals um, benefit as well.